Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Bex here today to do a little holiday book haul for you. I typically wait a few months until I've accumulated a larger stack of books to do a book haul, but I really just felt like doing one today. I figured it'd be a fun short little video. I only have five books because it's just the books that I received either as gifts for Christmas or that I bought using gift cards that I got for Christmas. I'm the type of person that I separate the books I haven't officially hauled yet and I don't put them on my TBR shelf until they've been presented in a video. So I can also just, you know, get to share these with you and get them on my shelves faster and be ready to read them whenever I want. So if you're interested to see what I got for Christmas, you can keep watching. The first book I received is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers is an author that I've been interested in checking out for a while. She writes science fiction, stuff that's really like set in space often, and I really enjoy books set in space. This is a novella that takes place during the 22nd century, and humans have advanced to the point where they can survive harsher environments using biological supplements, and so our main character is traveling with a group of people to all of these different exoplanets, I guess, to see if they're inhabitable or not, and our main character is really reflecting on the fact that she's gonna have been away from home for a really long time, like, will anybody even remember her? Her body will look different from these supplements as well. And just sort of amusing on life as it exists at this time. Uh, I don't think this is like a really intense sci-fi. It seems like it's going to be very calm and thought-provoking. And so I'm really interested to have this be my first taste of a Becky Chambers book. Next I have a bit of a funny book and that is Feel the Burn, a Bernie Sanders mystery by Andrew Schaffer. This is by the same person who wrote the Obama Biden mysteries, which I do recall seeing at some point in the past. Les stumbled across this book and she bought me a copy and she also bought herself a copy. So at some point we will buddy read this. Bernie Sanders holds a special place in our hearts because we're originally from Vermont and he's a senator from Vermont. And so yeah, he, <laughs> he gets a lot of attention on the internet every once in a while and we thought this would be a funny book to read. It's sort of a cozy mystery. The plot of this book is that Bernie is returning to Vermont for a weekend of events and he goes to a specific place called Eagle Creek and the intern that's with him is from there and when they're there somebody gets murdered and it all ties into the maple syrup industry. There's a bunch of different suspects and I guess Bernie and his intern Crash Robertson are going to have to figure out who committed the crime. I imagine it'll be a fun time. I will not take this too seriously. And yeah, we'll see uh, what it's like to read a book like this uh, set in my home state. We're now going to get much more serious. I picked up The Pink Line, Journeys Across the World's Queer Frontiers by Mark Gewisser. This is a South African author, which I learned when I was trying to figure out how to pronounce his last name. So I apologize if that is still incorrect. This author has done a lot of research there, an author and a journalist in sort of queer spaces. And so this book is a compilation of a bunch of different things uh, related to that. It was published in 2020, so it's fairly new. And there's a bunch of different chapters, some of which are about specific people's stories. And these are stories that are from all over the world. So we have stuff uh, taking place in like Cape Town, Cairo, Moscow, Guadalajara. And so there's those are specific people's stories. He also has chapters that are just essays about particular topics related to queer identity and queer culture. So there's the transgender culture wars. There's also the pink line through time and space. And the pink line is just a representation of like queerness and queer frontiers, really. I, th I thought this would be a really interesting dive into queer culture as it is right now and what people are going through in different areas of the world that aren't necessarily like the US, Canada, the UK. We're, we're branching out a bit here. Uh, it, it is a, a thicker book, but I was flipping through it and I, I really liked some of the random paragraphs that I read. So I think it'll be a really engaging read. Second to last, I picked up Fight of the Century. Writers reflect on 100 years of landmark ACLU cases. This is a collection of essays that's edited by Michael Chabon and Alialet Waldman. ACLU is the American Civil Liberties Union. Particularly when Trump was in power, every single time he would try to enact some sort of crazy rule or law, the ACLU would file a case against it every time a state tries to do something that really infringes on people's rights. 
ACLU is usually the one stepping in and uh, putting together a case to fight for the people. Within this, there are many different essays by a lot of different authors, and each one is sort of grounded in a particular landmark ACLU case that took place. So to give you some examples, there is uh, Yajasi wrote about Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka. That's a pretty famous case. A lot of these I haven't heard of. There's a lot of different essays in here. So some of them are like Marlon James writing about Lawrence v. Texas. I don't remember off the top of my head what that's about, but there are others in here that I've heard of. There is Lauren Groff writing about Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton, which will be interesting to read considering what has now happened with Roe v. Wade. Uh, so yeah, this will be a book that'll be really easy to pick up and put down because it's, each essay is going to be very contained regarding the specific case. But I thought that was a really creative way to write about American history. So looking forward to diving into this one at some point. The last book that I have to share with you is one that I picked up in the bargain section of the local bookstore, which is why I have a hardcover copy, and that is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This book and this author have been on my radar for a bit, and then Emily at Books with Emily Fox uh, started talking about how great this book was, and so when I saw it at the bargain area, I, I couldn't resist. I had to buy it. And so this one is a fiction book about two fathers. Each of them have a son that's gay, and they do not agree really necessarily with their son's lifestyle and who they've chosen to love and though their sons are actually married to each other then both those fathers find out that their sons have been murdered presumably because they were a gay couple and so these fathers who were both have a bit of a rough past end up teaming up to get revenge and get justice for their son's murders. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit of an intense read. Emily described this as a dad book, which I can totally see based on the a synopsis on the inside cover, but that doesn't deter me from wanting to check it out. I think it'll be a, a bit of a different read for me, but probably still very engaging and uh, fun. Not like fun fun, but still fun. Those are the five books that I got over the holidays. If you have read any of these books or you're also interested in reading them, let me know in the comments below. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you later.